so you can stack it in and stack it up and just kind of, you know, you can put like 100 pounds of wood in there. 100 pounds. And then really all you need to, to light it and just you kind of light it from, from, from this side so it kind of burns like a candle in that direction. But the flue passage is there up and over and around and whatnot. It doesn't take much. Something like this will usually do it on the end. Put it all in one end. And, it'll, and it should fire off. You have to open the out. It's a C and an O. And this thing points in the direction of the flue gas. This one here lets the air in. And the air comes in from underneath the floor. And up into the bottom. And this tells the air whether it's going either directly underneath the fire. There's a grate right underneath. And when it's pushed in, it's it's closed. And the air can't the air if the air comes up, it meets that grate. If it can't go through the grate, it turns and comes up and into this hollow air chamber here. This is a, a four-inch tube steel, four by two or four by three. So it's hollow and it's connected to the air passage. And there's a slit cut in it at the top and in the uh, in the bottom, and it w air washes the door, keeps the door from from carving up. Pretty much, it stays this clear the whole year because of that. So you can okay. actually feel the air coming in yeah. right yeah. now through That's those right. through That's those slots, leashes. and that provides over fire air, yeah. and that gets the gasification burn, blah blah blah, and pretty much. We only we only have to use under fire air, um, or we, we really don't have to use under fire air. You can use under fire air to get it started, or at the very end when it's all sort of just a kind of a lump of, of coals, you rake it all together over the grate, and then you pull this and you under fire air to the coals, that finishes them off, and then it can fall down through that grate and it goes into the basement, into the uh, ash pit. There's a air comes into a T. So air comes in and up into the firebox, and the ashes go down into a steel box in the basement. We empty that once a year. So for burning it, keep that in, open, open. Once it's all done, if there's a few ashes left, a few coals left, you can close both of them by code. You're required to have a 10% bypass hole in there, so we, we can't lock it down completely. There'll always be some convective flow up through it. So. If there's a little bit in and it's five o'clock and you want to go home, it, you know, go ahead and close it off. And we do want to close it off before we go home. We don't want to start a fire at 4.30 and then leave and have the fire burning without being able to, to close it off. Because otherwise there'll be a convective flow up through all night and all the heat we stored in the rock will just get transferred to the incoming air and be taken out the chimney. So after we saturate the rock with heat, we want to close it off in and out and let, let the heat off gas overnight into the There's no dampering down business. That's the whole idea of the masonry heater. It just rages away. And the castable refractory in there can handle the heat. And there's a circuitous enough path that by the time that the heat flue gas leaves, it's 350-ish degrees. Hmm. And how long does a fire burn for? Usually. Three-ish to four-ish hours, hmm. kind of more or less. And how long does it take to start getting heat? Feeling the heat? Uh, it's gonna be. It's not gonna heat up um, this thing too much today because it's it's starting at room temperature. Mm. So, but once you get it rolling, you know, fire it every day or, or twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>